Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Time now for the week that was. Let's take a look at the top stories that made headlines across the globe this week. Now, the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, spoke at the prestigious think tank Chatham House in London. Amid various questions and answers, Tinubu promised to tackle the terror rates and security situation in Nigeria head on so that the country can also effectively provide security support for its neighboring nations. Your Excellency, wonderful. The question I, I wanted to ask, you have touched on briefly. My name, first of all, is Baroness Tinuke Davis Kesenten. I'm a Nigerian. You've touched on security, very important issue in Nigeria. But you've not told us how you're going to manage this. We'd like you to tell us how you manage security in Nigeria. And second part of my question, there's loads of kidnapping of women and girls in Nigeria, rape of our young children in Nigeria. Can you tell us, uh, Your Excellency, how this will be managed? Thank you. Uh, let me want, uh, once, a demonstrate here. One of those philosophers, I wanted doctrine that I believe firmly in is teamship, unbreakable team. <laughs> to demonstrate that, I will choose the first question, assign it to Dele Alake. Okay. And the second question, assigned to Nasiru Erufai. Security has been a big issue in Nigeria in the last few years, and that has affected not only rural economies, but agricultural production, commerce, and everything else. Um, the Bola Tinubu administration will address these challenges or whatever remains of it after the efforts of this administration in at least three ways. First, policing. Nigeria has about 300,000 policemen for a population of over 200 million. We need at least twice that number. That will be achieved, that will be achieved by amending the constitution so that policing can be at federal, state, and even at community level. Okay, we're having another round of questions. So I start with the lady there, you, yes. Um, Nigerian in diaspora of over 40 years. I know we have remittances over 30 billion remitted to Nigeria from worldwide every year. And I do appreciate that the leaders, they do come every electoral cycle to speak to us in diaspora, but we can't vote. Is there any plans you have, sir, with regards to diaspora voting? I, 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 I think uh, it was Erufa last night that mentioned that diaspora voters are entitled to voting. If you make contribution to the economy with remittances that you have been making, your right to vote should not be abrogated, but promoted. However, we are still build, building confidence in our democratic and vote, voting system. INEC is still yet to assure us during this election that electronic transmission, the technology being used for accreditation and the you know total food count is reliable, dependable, and assuring in our democratic process before we introduce a complicated element of mailing ballots and so My name is Priscilla Wigbo. Um, I'm a freelance um, broadcast journalist. So you've spoken a great deal 
about what you've done in Lagos and yes, we're very aware of it and you're a team player because you're able to include everybody else and we appreciate your team here today and they're very capable and we can see that they have the capacity and the capability. However, sir, you are running for president and as Nigerians, we would very much like to hear from you because we believe the office of the president, if voted in, will be you and not your team per se. So on that note, sir, if I may, we haven't seen you engage with Nigerians on a one-to-one -one interview or at any of the live um, programs that has been going on. And furthermore, there are issues at the moment running with regards to your identity, with regards to your age. So I wonder if you could provide some clarity on the issues of, of your identity and age, and also let us know when we can engage with you one-on-one -on -one on an, in an interview, hear from you directly as the office holder. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, uh, it's inquisitive. <laughs> uh, but at the time of birth, I was dated March 29, 1952, and the family record. I didn't think then, that day, I've determined to be or decided to be a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Not even that I will go to politics. I have a very good exposure in life. My record is consistent in the school and the university. The question, they now convinced that they wasted their money and their time. <laughs> The record is there. The transcript is there. So in March 1952, I'm not claiming another father. I am Tinobu and Tinobu proper. <laughs> if they want a DNA, they call us where? <laughs> Require for one. One of, uh, of them has been uh, even accused of not being a Nigerian citizen. Yeah. I didn't touch that area. Yes. Equally, it, is, it remains the same. Deloitte, <coughs> Chicago State University, where I graduated, has attested to that. Now I can announce that I've received my original replacement uh, degree certificate from them. <laughs> the Deloitte <coughs> trained me as an accounting firm. Mobile oil has attested to my record, a standing record. I got to the pinnacle of my career. And the private sector. Who among them can brag about that? Now, uh, yes, you want to wrestle with the pig, you got to live with the dirt. That's what I'm doing. I go into politics, real, knowing fully well that it's a muddy water. Smog will come. You will have to live with the dirt and uh, make sure you are upright to finish the job. Thank you. Any part of it that I didn't answer? That one-to-one -one conversations. One-to-one -to -one conversation. Yeah. Uh, 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 excuse me. Uh, 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 Please, be quiet. Why? I see myself as a marketable individual. <laughs> Want to use me to make money, and I'm saying no. <laughs>
Uh, well, uh, isn't it interesting that <laughs> A lot to unpack there, right, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's been the talk of town for a few days. Uh, it's not something that will go away uh, no, so no, soon. Um, more so that we are entering, you know, we're getting closer and closer to the, to the elections. Uh, but Chatham House for uh, the presidential candidate of the APC was quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, was it interesting for the good reasons or the bad reasons? reasons. I would say for both, you know. Uh, you can take away from the fact that um, uh, the candidate, Ashwa Jibola Metinobu, um, gave an interesting uh, speech. And the mere fact that he could, uh, <clears throat> I think about the first time, you know, use the teleprompter uh, quite um, fairly, <laughs> fairly conveniently, uh, that's good. Uh, world leaders, you know, uh, including our own Vice President Yemi Oshibaji, who has perfected, you know, the use of uh, teleprompter. Um, they do it, you know, um, easily. So uh, seeing him use the teleprompter, uh, unlike what, uh, for example, uh, Atiku Abubakar at the same Chatham House in 2019 did, or President Muhammadu Buhari when he was still the candidate of the APC in 2015 did that they had to read uh, from a paper, you know. So, and I think that it probably makes sense, you know, to have him use a teleprompter more uh, if you have to read a prepared text. But you know that Chatham Mouse is not just about um, laying the ground as to your initial speech. Anybody could have read it. Anybody could have prepared it for you. You know, a 12 year old could have read it on your behalf. Uh, what Chatham House, by you know, tradition, uh, is essentially about is having now laid out your plans is to now engage with the media, with the guests, with the people in the hall, uh, to speak to the issues that you have read out, which was what a number of people were expecting uh, Ashwa Jutinobu to do. Uh, people have argued that out of about 10 questions, he touched on about four. Uh, that's not a pass mark. <laughs> you know, um, you, you, ideally you'll be expected, he was expected to deal with all the questions. Um, if at a later stage you now feel that people could chip in, you know, I, I don't think that um, you will have run foul of anything. But then starting on the notes that he did, uh, assigning questions that were directly posed at him to other people uh, was not just good enough. People will have to understand uh, the difference between candidate Tinubu and a potential president Tinubu is not yet the president of Nigeria. Uh, and the argument, which nullifies the argument that, oh, as somebody who will run an inclusive government, he will always, you know, ask his ministers or ask his members of the cabinet, you know, to, to delegate. Yes, you are allowed to delegate. It's your constitutional right. But while you are seeking people's vote, while you are seeking to be elected as a candidate on a platform like Chatham House, or if there will be a debate or a town hall, it will be expected that you will discuss in detail uh, what you have read out and answer in precise terms. And I'm not, I don't know why they're shielding Ashwaju. You know, um, as a politician, as a senator in those days, as a governor, as the governor of Lagos State for eight years, he never shied away from He was very close to the media. He never shied away from one on one. Granted that on account of age and maybe, you know, um, some apparent uh, physical infirmities, uh, it's possible that he might have lost some of the touch and, 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 and you know, his style of speaking and stuff like that. So people are trying to teleguide him. But I think that they shouldn't treat him like a baby or like an invalid. He's not. Right. If you know what I mean. Um, take a quick look at two of the questions that, were, that he delegated. And one to Mr. Delia Lucky on uh, oil theft and the other one to, on security to uh, Malam Nasser Erufai, the governor of Cardinal State. Those questions were not um, answered, you know, um, adequately. The question about oil theft was not about what you do with oil theft. It was about the fact that in six months, NMPC has not remitted a dime into the covers of the federal government. And the CBN has been hammering, hammering on it for days, for weeks on end. 
what will you do as a president, except you're not aware that that is what is going on. It's not about saying that oh, we will deal with the issue of oil theft. Oil theft is just a derivative of why an NPC is not remitting money. But there are deeper issues. Are you aware of those deeper issues with the NMPC or NMPC Limited as it's called? If you are aware, how would you deal with them? That question should not have been delegated because that's the mainstay, you know, I mean, <laughs> somehow of the economy of Nigeria. Now on security, the governor of Kaduna State will not have been the best person to deal with the issue of security. I mean, how has he dealt with the issue of security in his own state? You know, when he had to, at a time, you know, call for um, mercenaries to be used. He didn't mention that, you know, at Chaffer Mouth. But then when you say that we are under police, is the administration that we are running now not aware that we are under police? Why would we have to wait till June next year if Ashwaju becomes the president before we can now double the, the, the number of people of, of the police officers and the army officers. Those those answers were 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 jejun. Absolutely. I think to, to begin with, my take is I don't think we should even start dishing brownie points for being able to go through the <laughs> teleprompter to start with. You're aspiring to the highest office of the country. So you at a bare minimum bare minimum we are in the century. You should at least be able to do that. However, yeah, we would like to see more of that, that being said. But then again, for lack of better words, I believe that he's been modicoddled uh, unnecessarily. unnecessarily. This is as good as going for a job interview mm -hmm. and being asked very pertinent questions. Mm -hmm. I will not have a delegation to assign my no. questions to no. because I need to prove my ability to get into that office first, right, isn't it? And... Um, it almost reeks of contempt. It almost reeks of, um, it's, it's very lackadaisical. And this is an approach that has actually been carried on for quite a bit. Yeah. Yes, yeah. there is a right to determine how you want to approach the media. Yeah. You did mention some very pertinent points, maybe infirmity, maybe his age, maybe he's also had bad experiences with the media. We cannot, you know, turn a blind eye to that. That's, that's, that that's being not a reason said, for, for you to absolutely. run away from the media. Absolutely. That being said, you are, this is a vehicle, a channel with which you're going to be talking to the electorate, to the people. Mm -hmm to whom or with whom you you're are very, going to, you're, you're very, <laughs> that you're, you're seeking you're to very serve. Correct, Abby. You're very so I, I believe that this has been, um, it's almost shocking to see. It very. I mean, if you'd, for example, look at the question posed um, at him by uh, Priscilla and Wipo, Yes. Uh, for example. Very, she asked some very important brilliant, questions. Brilliant question. And when she had to repeat uh, the thing about one-on-one -on -one interview, you know, I, 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 it looks to me like, um, uh, Ashwa Jitinubu got carried away by um, the, the wrong narrative that it was, it, it, it's only one TV station that wants him to come out and speak. Yes, Arise TV, you know, might have extended invitation to him, not just, you know, for the town hall meeting, uh, but, you know, generally to say if you're ready and if you're willing, there's a platform, you know, we're yeah. here for you, you know, we've done it with practically all the other presidential candidates, not only Atiku, not only Peter Obi, uh, not only Shogure, practically all the other 17 you know, presidential candidates have you know, volunteered to speak. I mean, there's nothing, and this is, there's and nothing this biting there. This also should be an expectation. I think it shouldn't be a matter of volunteering because by even putting it that way, it's, yeah. it's almost suggesting as though no, no, you're I'm, doing I'm us a favor. My, my, my point is that, so when that question was posed to him, to say that when will you be engaging in one-on-one, -on -one, Priscilla didn't have a particular station in, in mind. mind. Priscilla works as a journalist, yeah. you know, in London, and she has had some things to do with um, TV stations that are directly or indirectly linked to the candidate, you know, of the APC in London, you know, for example. So she's saying that when will you come on TV? Yes, we see the town hall meetings that you do through your party. Brilliant idea. That's a strategy to engage. But then at what point? Because when you say that you are delegating, if you do become the president, like Obasanjo did, I can't recall so much about Yaradwa, but like also President Muhammadu, you know, uh, has done, you will have to sit at a media, you know, uh, uh, roundtable with journalists. When you do that for two hours, as Obasanjo and Muhammadu Buhari have done, you won't delegate questions. Okay. And it will be life. Because people will, will have to know what you have in mind, what you're doing, assess your own, you know, government. So, 
and you will have to do it even with the stations owned by government. Absolutely. So for how long are you going to say that? Oh, if you, they want to make money out of me, who wants to make money out of anyone? You know what I mean? Because this is something that will be re recurrent. It will be a recurrent decima. The strategy to deal with the media will have to change, especially by the analysts of Ashwa Jibola Metinubu. Yeah. All right, in the meantime, it's been revealed that APC's presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu, is yet to sign the peace accord for the presidential candidates put together by the National Peace Committee more than 70 days after the candidates of the other 17 political parties signed the agreement, which is an expression of their commitment to free and fair election. The party officials had signed the peace accord under the supervision of the Peace Committee at a ceremony witnessed by a large audience in Abuja. Although the vice presidential candidate of APC, Kashim Shatima, had represented him at last September's event, he wasn't allowed to sign on behalf of the former Lagos state governor. Tinubu was then granted benefit of the doubt because Tinubu was out of the country in the understanding that he would sign the agreement whenever he returned. Mm. I mean, of course, this is not a Tinubu bashing session, <laughs> as they expect. It can be. I mean, there's but, no, there uh, but be you have to call to order. Bash. You really have to call people to order when they appear, of course, <laughs> pretty much, right? <laughs> um, you take this. I mean, uh, the peace accord thing is important. It, yeah. it is. It is. Uh, I've read about it in, in the media, and I'm wondering, can it be true? Well, of course, it, 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 it is indeed true. Yes, uh, the running mate to uh, Ashwa Jibala Ahmed Tinubu was at the peace accord signing um, um, ceremony event in September. But naturally, you are not a candidate, so he was not allowed to sign uh, on behalf of, of, of the presidential candidate. Except APC, or Ashwa Jibola Ametinobu himself, you know, is saying that they do not believe in that you know, process, then there won't be any point delaying in signing it. Otherwise, it will give um, it, you know, it, 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 it will raise suspicion about the capacity of the candidate to be able to append his signature on, on documents, uh, which, will be, <laughs> which will be an important requirement, you know, when we're talking of capacity, you know, and, 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 and the things that the law, you know, uh, uh, requires of you okay. uh, as the president. That's something that you can't delegate. Because otherwise, if you're not able to do that, uh, it becomes a subject of, um, of incapacity, you know, which people will raise a lot of dust about. If Ashwaju has indeed not signed it, he ought to. If there are reasons why he can't, then he should be stated. Yes. Clearly. Clearly, very clearly, and good clearly. time too.